You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. Man, we are here once again today. Man, we have another amazing show lined up for y'all today. We're going to talk to an amazing guest, Dean Kane. And this is something that I hope you guys look forward to because this is all about this new amazing movie, Paul's Promise. Dean Kane, good morning to you, sir. You're a legend. How you doing? <laughs> good morning, Shemaya. How are you this morning? Man, doing awesome, man. Like I said, you're a legend. I mean, if I did an intro to your resume, it would probably take the whole uh, segment. So <laughs> It's because I'm old, my friend. Man, old and successful, man. I'm getting there too, so I'm right behind you. So, man, first and foremost, this amazing movie, uh, Paul's Promise, is a very touching movie. The mother of Paul gives him a prayer list and asks him to make a promise to pray over it, man. And it's it's a very touching movie. Share with the audience a little bit your role playing in this film. Well, I play uh, I play the uh, fire captain here, and the, and the story's set in the '60s during the civil rights. Movement and it's really the whole story is about uh, if you really want to take the 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 two the two people who are the center of it, in my in my opinion it's it's a, it's really an anti racism film um, which I think is very pertinent right now it it it, it basically look, no one is born racist it's a learned behavior so growing up Paul and his best friend Jimmy um, were just best friends that's all they knew they were best friends they lived nearby they were both poor. Um, uh, Paul happened to be white. Jimmy happened to be black and they were best friends. They were hanging out and, um, they didn't define each other by the color of their skin, but just by being wonderful friends. And then, um, society kind of gets in the way and, 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 um, and especially on Paul's side, it's his, his mother, you know, loved Jimmy it was, everything was great. But Paul's father was, was, was a drinker, was racist, wouldn't allow Paul to hang out. Um, with Jimmy and actually beat him if he did so. So as, as they grow up um, and time passes, um, they split ways um, and Paul becomes a firefighter, works under me. And we go to a call one night and it's at Jimmy's house. We put it out and uh, Jimmy uh, goes to thank Paul and ask how his mother is. And um, Paul won't even talk to him. He ignores him because the other firefighters, not Mike, character, but the other, some of the other firefighters are like, well, you're you going to talk to, you know, that guy, you're going to talk to him. And it's like, no, I don't know him. He doesn't know me. Um, and so it, that just, you know, obviously scars Jimmy quite badly, but Jimmy, Jimmy's a great character. He's, he is, uh, he is, uh, first of all, um, Joseph Cannon plays him and plays him so wonderfully with a kindness um, that you would hope to have given his situation. His brother played by tank, uh, tank doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't really feel the same way, but um, through his, you know, Paul has become a drinker. He's become a bad husband. He's become racist in his actions, even though in his heart, he's not. And so I think part of the reason he became a drinker and a bad husband is because he knew he was doing something that was against his heart. Jimmy was his best friend and and they were just best friends, period. They're judged by the content of their character. And so when, when Paul's mom is dying and she asks him to, to say that, prayer list in church. Paul uh, agrees, but he's really lying. He isn't planning on doing it. Um, but she keeps hanging on. And and finally, through a series of events, he decides he will do that. And by doing so, it changes his heart completely. And this man, this is based on a real story. Paul Holderfield then goes on to, to completely do a, 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 a 180. Uh, he creates a, a friendly chapel and, and a, a and an organization called Flame, feeding and loving all men equally. And then he spent the rest of his life giving back to anyone in need. And uh, I mean, they, you know, a soup kitchen, a food pantry, provide clothing, shelter, spiritual health needs, you know, you name it. He was there. That was that became the focus of his life. And that's what this story is about. And like you said, when he started the Friendly Chapel and in Flame, feeding and loving all men equally, this is a much needed story uh, oh. of a reminder of what it was like for people to look at each other through eyes of just human beings and mm -hmm. not any other way. How important is it for people to really take the time to appreciate a film like this? I, you know, I think it's the message. It's a hundred percent the message. And if, and you look at what's going on today in American society and you think, 
you know, it, it, it's things are, you know, race is much more of an issue now than it was when I was a kid. I, I've never even thought about it. And I'm, you know, I'm a mixed race kid. I'm Japanese and and then English, Irish or whatever. But I never I never thought of that. I just thought of myself as, you know, an, an American. And I didn't think anything about Chinese, Japanese, black, white, green, yellow. I didn't I didn't know anything. Um, so, I, I, again, it's a thing. It's something that's taught. And I think, it, you know, if people can see that in this film and sort of have it reach it's cliche to say if it it changes one life but if it does change a life it changes some people's perspectives then i think it's a, it's a very important film and i hope that message gets across once again talking to a true legend dean kane and this amazing new movie paul's promise this is based on a true story like we said earlier but it is coming out very very soon october 21st it's gonna be in 200 plus markets in theaters and man first and foremost i don't want to say to you dean it's a true honor having you on today and just having an opportunity to talk to you man a true legend i mean i'm just saying we, we, <laughs> we know your resume <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that shamaya you know but if i had a voice like yours i would have stayed in radio because I, I i you know you can do radio in your in your in your shorts and flip-flops you know, I got to go show up on set and do all that stuff, but I don't have your voice, my friend. See, it's no, it's no pressure because if I was on camera, it'd be a whole different story. So I'm, I'm glad I don't have to be on the uh, camera lens. <laughs> it's a different, it's a different world. Um, but again, I, I don't do much voiceover because uh, I don't, I, I could, I could never play Darth Vader. Let me put it that way. And you could. <laughs> man, I appreciate that, man. Once again, true honor having uh, Dean Kane on today. Make sure you go watch the new amazing film. Paul, Paul's Promise, based on a true story, out in theaters in over 200 plus markets, October 21st. Thank you, sir, for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us today. Thanks, Shemaya. Cheers. <laughs>